In this video, we're going to be comparing translation in eukaryotic and prokaryotic cells. Additionally, we're going to look at the initiation of prokaryotic translation. Let's start by comparing eukaryotic and prokaryotic translation. Eukaryotic and prokaryotic translation really only differ in initiation. That is to say, the elongation and termination are roughly the same. So now let's compare eukaryotic and prokaryotic translation and initiation. In prokaryotic cells, we have a consensus sequence called the Schein-Delgarno sequence. However, in eukaryotic cells, we don't have this sequence. In prokaryotic cells, the Schein-Delgarno sequence acts as a particular tracker that allows it to bind to a specific binding site on the small subunit of the ribosome. However, eukaryotic cells don't have this. They don't have a Schein-Delgarno sequence, but they do have that 5' prime cap. And what they'll have is cap binding proteins, and these cap binding proteins are actually going to help them bind to the small subunit of the ribosome. Another couple of small minute differences is that in prokaryotic cells, we have the 50S and 30S subunits of the ribosome, the 50S being the large and the 30S being the small, which make up the 70S ribosome. And in eukaryotic cells, we have the 60S and the 40S subunits, the 60S being the large, and the 40S being the small subunits that make up the 80S ribosome. Additionally, both use initiation factors in GTP. However, in eukaryotic cells, you would call these initiation factors EIFs because they're eukaryotic initiation factors. But something important to note is that GTP is going to be the energy source of translation. One more very important difference between prokaryotic and eukaryotic translation is that in prokaryotic cells, tRNA is going to bind after mRNA binds to the ribosome. However, in eukaryotic cells, tRNA is going to bind to that mRNA molecule before it joins that 40S ribosomal subunit. So essentially, before mRNA binds to the small subunit of the ribosome, the initiator tRNA is going to bind to the start codon. So at the start of initiation, IF3 is bound to the 30S, or the small subunit of the ribosome, and it's preventing the 50S, or the large subunit, from complexing with this. And when those two segments are separated from each other, that allows this mRNA molecule to bind. And so remember that this mRNA molecule has a Schein-Delgarno sequence. And this Schein-Delgarno sequence is going to bind to a specific binding site on that 30S subunit. Next, IF2 is going to complex with GTP. And then it's actually going to bind to our initiator tRNA. So we'll have an initiator tRNA bound IF2 complex. And this initiator tRNA with FMET, because remember this is prokaryotic, is going to bind to our start codon, which is going to be AUG. As our initiator tRNA is moving towards binding to the start codon, IF1 is also going to bind to the small subunit. So we can think of the initiation factors like a countdown, 3, 2, 1, to the takeoff of translation. Please also note that the ends of the RNA is shown as shorter, not because we've actually started translation yet, but just because I abbreviated the length of the mRNA molecules for the sake of space. So roughly around the time that IF1 binds, our initiator tRNA will have found our start codon, which will cause GTP to hydrolyze into GDP and a phosphate. This GTP hydrolysis right here, much like ATP hydrolysis that you may have seen in Bio1, is going to provide energy for us to start translation. And with the hydrolysis of GTP, the initiation factors are all going to leave. And when the initiation factors leave, that means that the small and large subunits of the ribosome can come together to form the 70S ribosomal complex, which will now contain the initiator tRNA and the P site. If you remember from Bio1, a ribosome has three sites in it. The A site, the amino acyl site, the P site, or the peptidyl site, and the E site, or the empty or exit site. All these sites are located in the 50S, or the large subunit. Or, if this was a eukaryotic cell, this would be the 60S subunit. And the small subunit is going to be responsible for binding onto our mRNA molecule and facilitating its movement along. One special note about the P site of a ribosome is that it contains a specific enzymatic activity called peptidyl transferase. This peptidyl transferase activity means that this P site is able to actually catalyze the formation of a peptide bond. I hope you found this video really helpful. The concepts and information presented in these videos will be true no matter what genetics class you are taking. However, the concepts presented in this video are referencing material currently covered in Baylor University's coursework. 
Remember, if you are currently enrolled as a Baylor student, we offer free tutoring services. Our tutoring center is located on the first floor of the Sid Richardson Building. You will find all the details you need to know about these services on our website, www.baylor.edu. tutoring You may schedule a free 30-minute one-on-one tutoring session online through Navigate, or just drop in during our open business hours. For more information about our current services, please visit our website. Thank you.